welcome to the Astro Imaging Journey channel. Please enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome back to my Astro Imaging Journey channel. And in this episode, I'm going to uh, do a little first impressions of the CGX mounts that you just saw. I uh, got it uh, finally here and installed and working. And I've used it for, I know it's only been an episode or two uh, since you've uh, seen me actually get it. Uh, I got it while the uh, uh, the, 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 the multi-part episode uh, was uh, being uh, uploaded and, uh, to the channel. And yeah, so it, I've had it for a few weeks now and actually had a few good nights of weather and was able to actually do some imaging. And uh, anytime we make any major changes, we know there's going to be some growing pains. Now, one of the things I was hoping for was, uh, which, here, let me put the uh, image of the ring, rig up here. Um, you know, one of the things I was hoping for was that it would be uh, seamless, that, you know, they're both, the, the CGM and the CGX were both Celestron. Uh, shouldn't have to worry about drivers, shouldn't have to worry about firmware. Uh, the StarSense Auto um, uh, what's the word here StarSense Auto Align there we go um, yeah so you know, <clears throat> all that should work uh, together uh, and the, the settings being that the it's the same uh, drivers and everything, the software should just seamlessly transition over. Uh, you know, I was hoping it was plug and play, and my hopes were dashed a little bit that first night. Uh, but nothing that wasn't able to be uh, surpassed. So the first thing that I wanted to bring up was guiding. So I hooked, you know, we hooked everything up in the last episode, uh, did my polar alignment uh, with the pole master, and uh, got that pretty well set, and then I did the uh, star sense auto align, and you know, it, it, auto, it said it auto aligned the first try, so perfect, right? Well, then I load up uh, PHD2 and let it do its thing to, you know, calibrate on guiding and then uh, load it up SGP and just did a quick uh, target. And let's put the, that target up here. I can't remember. Let me see. So this was the UFO galaxy, if I remember correctly. And look at the way those stars are. They're diamond shaped. Tracking was off. You know, it was doing this weird hunting hunting pattern. Uh, you know, the first sub that came through, I was like, whoa, what the heck is going on there? Uh, and I went over and looked at my guiding and look at the spikes on this thing. Uh, one of the things I failed to do was make the adjustments to PhD2 uh, to take into consideration that now I don't have all that backlash, so I don't need the uh, pre-pulse uh, or backlash compensation uh, pulses and all those good uh, settings. Unfortunately, I didn't record any of this, so that's why I'm kind of describing it here. Uh, so the you know first thing you're going to want to do is Reset all your values back to default, start from scratch, and uh, do the uh, you know the, the calibration. I can't remember what it is now. Not not the cal not the guiding calibration, uh, but the it helps you determine what your settings are. I can't remember what the name of it is right now. Um, I'll put it on the screen when I do remember. 
uh, during editing and um, you know get those minimum motion settings you know your max values for uh, the guiding and all of that and once we get all of once I got all of that uh, settled then you'll see here my guiding smoothed out a lot there was still a little uh, still some tweaking that I need to do I'll spend another night I gotta I got one night this week that might be good for imaging but the moon's kind of in play so we'll we'll see how it goes um, you know if I can image then you know it, it's gonna be a near full moon it's like 97 percent or something like that so imaging would be narrow band anyways um, and the targets I'm trying to complete I need the RGB and L so um, I might dedicate that night to uh, you know the first few hours where I would normally be focusing on these other targets uh, I might focus those couple hours on double checking my polar alignment tweaking those settings in PhD2 see if I can get that smoothed out a little bit more uh, but the one thing that is a little bit concerning to me is uh, this here uh, notice the red I believe that's RA look how that does a little bit of a sine wave on that uh, diagonal now the v-shape is almost perfect perpendicular uh, but we do get a little bit of that v-shape on uh, the RA or not the v-shape but that little bit of sine wave where it's wavering on once you know the below and above uh, that line it doesn't seem to be impacting too much but you know um, maybe there's an adjustment screw I need to tweak I'm not sure um, but you know it's one of those things I'll be playing with to see if I can get things working a uh, couple of the other issues I had was um, the first was obviously the hand controller um, you know the star sense you can move it from um, mount to mount and it can store the profiles for I believe three maybe five but I, there was three on the menu and I failed to move it to the number two position and it still thought it was on the C gem and uh, you know that caused a little bit of havoc at first because um, it wasn't it was trying to load an old profile for a different mount and it wasn't creating a new uh, profile so I had to default the hand controller um, had to go in and reset my time reset my GPS coordinates uh, all of that good stuff and then it was still you know, doing a couple of weird things after I got all that and it, and it aligned fine um, you know as SGP it would slew over uh, center on the target and the total error was like 15,000 pixels it was off by quite a bit normally I'm off maybe 1500 2000 um, you know but the targets in the frame and here the target was completely off frame it would have to recenter a couple times um, so that created a little bit of problems the first night uh, I had to babysit the mount and uh, you know I quickly after you know I, I purposefully set my first target to do a meridian flip because that was one of the problems with the C gem is I could not do meridian flips at all um, so I turned around that first target set it to do a meridian flip um, you know 10 o'clock or so I picked a target that was 
uh, I can't remember which target it was now, um, but it, you know, the Meridian Flip, I think it was the Monkey Head Gal uh, Nebula, as a, as a matter of fact. And uh, so the Meridian Flip was to happen around 1030. Uh, so it was early enough that if there was a problem, I could catch it, get out there, correct it, and it wasn't happening in the middle of the night when I'm you know, taking a nap or whatever. And luckily I did that because it did the Meridian Flip. Um, said, you know, 15, 18,000 uh, total pixel error. And then it attempted to readjust and it pointed, uh, it basically took the, te the deck and almost pointed to the ground. Um, bound my cables, you know, it, it, it was, it was nasty. Um, so next night I went out there and I did a complete redo of the star sense offset and because something clearly was wrong I don't know if I bumped the star sense when I was moving everything around and it shifted a little bit um, I don't know if the offset even though the offset should be between the star sense camera and the op uh, optical tube you know I, I don't know if it is translating something differently when between the CGM and the CGX um, with what offset it had in stored in the camera. So I slewed over to um, Rigel or I can't remember which uh, star I used to uh, try and get that centered. Um, that was an exercise in futility because I no longer have a finder scope on there. So what I thought was the right star was not the right star. So then my total error went to like 25,000. So I was clearly on the wrong star. Um, so then the, the following night, I then reinstalled the uh, Orion guide uh, scope that I had with the Starshoot camera. And I used that as my uh, finder scope because that's USB, right? Uh, I don't have to get behind the scope. I don't have to look through it. I can have my laptop sitting right there on the chair next to the telescope where I can control and see. And it's just wide enough that I can see if what's in the frame, it's got the bullseye. And I'll, I might do a video uh, later on that. Uh, we'll see. Anyways, uh, so moon was up that night. I think it was like 50% illuminated or something. So I let the scope do its alignment, slewed over to the moon. moved using the hand controller moved the scope to um, the or you know the, the the edge so that the moon was roughly centered in my frame and then i adjusted my uh, the star shoot and uh, the guide scope so that the moon was centered in the frame and now i have my finder scope um, it's not used for guiding. It'll be a good backup in case the uh, the off-axis guider, the ASI 174mm, uh, ever has problems. Uh, but you know, it it made for a good uh, guide or finder scope. Uh, so then I slewed over to uh, Sirius or. Uh, what was the other one that was up that night? I can't remember which which star was up right that night. Um, it's all kind of a blur a little bit. Uh, and I could clearly see uh, using the, the guide scope as a finder scope that 
that star was nice and bright and it was near the edge of that frame. So if I'm if my finder scope and my OTA are in line and what's in the center of one should be pretty much in the center of the other. If that's way off on the finder scope, then yeah, at 280 millimeters, then at 1960 millimeters, it's gonna be way off the frame uh, with the edge. So with that, I turned around, uh, did the adjustment, uh, forget which episode that was, uh, which reminds me somebody put a comment, uh, squirrel moment. So up here should have a card uh, where we're adjusting the offset of the uh, star sense and how to do that. And I went back through that process, hit the align, course adjustment, got it in the frame, then align again, uh, fine adjustment, got it centered, uh, let it calculate its offset, redid the uh, star alignment, and then slewed back to that via the hand controller and it was back in the center of the frame. And since I did that, the total error has been less than 2,000 pixels every single time. So it, it took, if I wouldn't have made some assumptions in the beginning and I just would have defaulted everything and started from scratch, uh, one night I probably would have been up and running uh, with the exception of the star sense having to re recalibrate the offset um, but you know it is what it is so lesson learned for me was next time default everything and start from scratch unless you're going like to like you're going from a cgx to another cgx you're just upgrading to a newer model or something i would might consider going to defaults anyways and starting from scratch. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. So first impressions are uh, guiding's a lot better. Don't have the backlash I was having before. Um, it does do a couple of weird things when it's doing the four star alignment with the star sense. Um, it's not insurmount insurmountable. Uh, what it'll do is it'll slew to the first point, take its image, start slewing to the second point, solve that image, and if it's at the second point, it immediately starts slewing to the third point and doesn't take an image of the second point. Slews to the third point, takes its image, slews back to the second point, and what do you know? Um, why it's doing that particular thing, you know, I'm not sure, but if for any reason it takes longer to, or if, if for any reason it takes longer to slew to the second point, it will take that image. As long as it's slewing and acquiring position before when it solves the previous image, it works fine. But if it happens to solve the image after it acquires the position for whatever reason, it doesn't, on, and only on the second position, doesn't do it on the third or fourth or any of the other ones. Um, it, it just doesn't take that image to solve, which means now it's slewing across the meridian to point three, then back to point two across the meridian, and then over again to four. That's a lot of extra movement that it shouldn't have to do. Um, so if Celestron was watching this, then hey, let me know if you 
needs some debugging online because whatever is happening. Personally, I think uh, I work for a software development company. I'm a network engineer. Part of our thing would be to look at this. Okay, you did point one, something happened with point two. You salute at point three. Point four is on the same side of the meridian. So finish three, go to four, finish four, go back to two. Don't go back across the meridian and, and put extra wear and tear on, on the gear. Um, and like I said, Celestron, if you're watching, send me whatever you can to debug this thing, and I'll send you whatever logs I can to figure out why when it is doing number two, if it gets to the position prior to taking the image, it will not take the image. It will immediately go to three and then come back. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. Anyways, um, so that adds just a minute or so to uh, the setup and getting it going. But I usually do that in the middle of those twilight air hours. Um, so the actual imaging doesn't start for a little bit. So that doesn't worry me as much as it could. Um, but once I'm imaging, everything works pretty much flawlessly as far as I can tell, um, or as I, was, as I would expect. Um, at this point, being brand new and working. So first impressions is I'm happy. It's taking the load that's on there. It's, it's a little louder. It is a little louder than uh, the C-Gem. The C-Gem, I could slew. I could start that alignment, walk up to my porch, which we're talking maybe 40 feet. Um, yeah, we'll say 40 feet, 40 to 50 feet. Uh, and I wouldn't hear anything. This one, I can be about 70, 80 feet away. And when it's doing a hard slew, a fast slew, I hear it. So, uh, you know, it's faint, but I can hear it. So that's a little bit in the minus column, but the, I don't have my backlash anymore issues. Um, it, it's a rock solid. It's taking the weight. No issues there. Um, it, so far, it's been good. So, so far, I've been happy with the purchase. Like I said, a couple of days to get it dialed in, but once I got it dialed in, it's been great. Of course, since I got it dialed in, I've only had maybe three sessions with it. But it's been great, with the exception of some clouds moving in and uh, messing up the, the session. But other than that, the mount itself has been doing great. So I'm happy with the purchase. And, you know, I would have liked the CGXL, but for an extra thousand bucks for my gear, if I had this Edge 14, yeah, I would have went with the, I wouldn't have had the CGM to begin with, um, but if I was upgrading to the Edge 14, then yeah, I'd be getting the uh, CGXL as well. But for what I'm doing right now, it's working great. So yeah, I think that's about it. Um, oh, the, the comment, the comment uh, I was mentioning on the offset. So one of the one of the commenters uh, was saying that there's a calibration in. Um, put it here. Uh, some about the calibration being in the menu as opposed to the way I did it in the video. Uh, I get what the commenter is saying. The way I originally had the image, the the video. Uh, 
labeled was misleading, that we weren't calibrating the star sense, we were actually calibrating the offset. So I updated the description of that video, I updated the uh, title of that video uh, to more accurately describe what we're doing. There is a calibration in the uh, menu that unless something goes horribly wrong and you're completely factory defaulting it, you should not have to touch once it's working. Uh, and I never had to touch that when I first got it. So uh, that's uh, that menu option I've never touched. Uh, what I was talking about earlier and in that video was calibrating the offset between the camera, the StarSense camera and your OTA so that it knows the center of your OTA is this far off from the center of this camera and when it slews it should know where you need to be for your OTA to be able to do your imaging or visual observing or whatever you're doing. Uh, so uh, I want to say thanks to the commenter. I can't remember uh, the individual's name right now, but you know, thanks for pointing out my error in uh, describing the video and the title. Uh, it's since corrected, so uh, thanks for helping keep the channel honest and uh, true to what we're trying to do here. So again, thank you. Uh, but with that, yeah, so first impressions of the CGX. Loving it so far. A uh, couple minor things that I'm living with right now. Uh, but like I said, they're minor. It's not detracting from the enjoyment I'm getting of using it right now. So with that, I'm going to say thanks everybody for watching. Hope you found this useful. As always, clear skies. Thank you for watching yet another video from the Astro Mentor Junior channel. Really appreciate your viewership. In our upper right, we have the latest video we've uploaded. In our lower right, we have what YouTube might think you would enjoy. And in the lower left is our subscription button. Please like this video, subscribe if you so choose. As always, clear skies, have a good one, and remember Duke.